Well, yeah, my name is Major Slack. Thanks for coming back. And this is part five of my Elden Ring Hybrid Ranger build. In this video, we're going to put the finishing touches on this build and get it boss ready. After which, we will be ready for Stormville Castle and all the hellaciousness that that entails, including the Mark of the Fell boss fight. All right, enough of the small talk. Let's get busy. Major Slack videos. All right, here we are at Storm Hill. Uh, where are we? We are at War Master Shack. This is exactly where we want to be. War Master Shack. In this field here are a whole bunch of trolls and a whole bunch of smithing stones. Typically, everybody goes into this field and just gets the smithing stones, but you're rolling with Major Slack. We're going to take down all these trolls, make some coins, some Major Coin, and then get the smithing stones over there in that statue right there. We have to sucker one of these trolls into bashing it to the statue. Let's... Let's start whacking these trolls. It'll take about five or six rockslings each. Just go up to them and start wailing away. Have no fear that you will always drop them on the third shot at the very least. Okay, so approach this with no fear. There you go. And remember to refill them after the fifth shot. A couple more shots to finish them off. Refill after every troll takedown and Bob's your uncle. Rinse and repeat. Easy thousand runes. Yeah, you can roar, but down you go. Next, this is the one we're going to use to bash, bash into the statue. You can't break open the statue on your own. You have to get a troll to do it. So let's just get his attention. And then back away behind the statue. As soon as he breaks the statue, let fly with another rock sling. There we go. This should break his stance. Down he goes. And I know some of you are saying, why don't you do a critical hit? I'm saying, why? Why do a critical hit? It's harder to do a critical hit once you take him down and then get away than it is to just simply throw, on a, throw more rock slings at him for demonstrational purposes. Down he goes. Now I'm up close, I have to roll away, switch to my staff. Now tell me which is easier, to just continue throwing rock slings at him or to do the sexy critical hit? I just say just continue to throw rock slings at him. Eh? Ain't broke, don't fix it. Easy money. And we got access to those smithing stones a lot easier than if we were just like running around on the horse trying to bait one of those trolls into running into it, running around the field full of trolls. You know the routine. There we go. I made a whole bunch of money. And while we're here, let's just scoot around the back. I'm going to get all these rune fragments here. Kill all these rams because uh, they're going to harsh your buzz as you're collecting the rune fragments on top of the... right here. Great place to farm rune fragments.
tons of them. Turn those into rainbow stones, very useful. Okay, and over here, on top of this plateau, there is a golden rim graveyard. Lots of money in there. Let's go cash in. Watch out for the giant land octopus on your left there. He may leap at you, as he just did. Alright, Golden Rune Graveyard. But there's a bunch of these, like, bomb worms here. See that one right there? See it's bunched up? Just run by it. Blows up. And there's two more here. One there, and one there. And let's just take out the ram here. So you won't harsh our buzz as we're collecting the goodies. Alright, my golden runes. Looks like we got them all. Round table, my good man. Let's cash in. And is there anything else that we don't need? Now, upgrade time. Hornbow up to plus five. We got all the goods. Let's do it to it. Excellent. Official game guide says you need a plus five weapon to take on Stormville Castle, and that we have. All right. Now, either a plus five regular weapon or a plus two um, unique weapon or a somber weapon. Level up. Points into Vigor. Next, let's go get the Golden Vow Ash of War. Back to War Master Shack. From Warmaster Shack, just go due north. Hop on your horse and go due north. That's all you have to remember. Due north. You may spawn some wolves, don't worry about it. Basically, we're going to the same place where we farmed those smoldering butterflies earlier on. Okay. And veer off to the right here, and you see the, these guys here. Might as well kill him again. And grab the goodies. 
Grab all these golden but these uh, smoldering butterflies. Looks good. Huh. I always wondered if you could, uh... Let's find out. You should go to the top of that uh, runes there to get this... Somber... Can we shoot it from here? You can. Far out. Well, that's way easier. Okay, get yourself a somber smithing stone one like that. And next, rock sling. We can go behind these ruins here to the east. Easy now, watch it. That's the guy you want. That bad boy right there. Okay, we're going to ambush him with rock sling. And that will give us the golden bow ash of war. Which gives you a, an 11... 11% damage boosting. Hang on. Two rock slings should bring him down. Yeah, try to do commentary and do this. Yeah. Two rock slings should bring him down. The third rock sling should finish him off. Make sure you target the man. And there we go. Ash of War. 11% damage bonus and it also bumps up your protection, like your armor. Alright. Really good Ash of War to have. Typically, you want to put it on a dagger. Your lightest weapon. I'm gonna put it on the S stock because the S stock is a good stabbing weapon. But typically, you would put it on a dagger, right? Having gotten that, next, let me get on top of these runes here. Ah, see some birdies. Always farm up them birdies for the flight pinions. Got those? Okay, we're gonna get on top of those runes there. Down here. This will give up a slumbering egg. This does not give up play pinions, if I recall correctly. And this is a lance. We don't need that. Down there is the camp boss. Okay, that's all we need to take out that bad boy right there. Target him, rock sling. Whoops. Wrong one, slack. Rock sling. A couple rock slings. And he's dead. That's it. And what we want is the exalted flesh. That's what that thing is right there. Exalted flesh. Let's go get it. I think you can double jump on top of this canopy here to avoid the enemies. Then grab here the exalted flesh. It just continue straight over this way to the south. Hop up here and cut to the left. Down there is Alexander. He's going to give you a free exalted flesh if you talk to him and free him. By the way, Exalted Flesh is perfect for Rock Sling. Rock Sling does physical damage. So to give a 20% bonus to your Rock Sling. Done and done. Pretty sure this is a safe drop. Let's find out. <laughs> yeah, it's a safe drop. Alexander. Stars. I'm so happy to see you. What's up? I am Alexander, also known as the Iron Fist. And as you can see, I'm stuck here. You certainly are. Yes. Can you help me out of this? Okay, our usual fee for this kind of work is one exalted flesh. You okay with that? Okay, good. My thanks. Just give and I'll pop. Don't dally. Give it your all. I okay, we don't really have a decent melee weapon, but you, what you can do is just... Um... 
lock onto something behind him and then just throw rock slings at him. That'll free him pretty quick. There you go. Or you could use your sword, but it'll take you about four or five charge attacks with your sword to do the same thing. Okay, so here we go. Well played, good lady. Well played. Okay, and about our pay? Well, I thank you. And as a token of my appreciation, I'd like you to have this. Okay, and tell us about Red Bane Castle. Once again, I journey to the east, where I intend to further my education in the ways of war. And beyond these lands lie the scarlet, rot blighted Kaelid wilds. And upon their southern edge is Redmayne Castle. There we go. Where a festival of combat is being held. Okay, I good. Doesn't the notion. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we shall see you there. Next! Let's go down this way. All the way down the ravine to the east. Get up this side of Grace. Rest up. And let's do an inventory. Inventory. And we're looking at... Six smithing stones, one and one smithing stone. We don't have any smithing stones too, but... Um, I think we're ahead of schedule with everything. Yep, we got the horn bow up a plus five, so it doesn't really matter. Um, Mad Pumpkin Head. Best way to take him down. Magic Limp Blade. Keep your distance. Lock on. Spam five charged Magic Limp Blades. One, two, three, four, five. Lock off. Reassess. See what the situation is. And it's good. Grab the Sanctuary Stone. And let's go grab some free smithing stones here. And talk to this merchant. And make an important purchase here. Do we have anything to sell? No, we do not. Purchase. This is what we want right here. Nomadic Warriors Cookbook number three. This will allow us to make poison bone arrows. Immensely useful. Grab that. Okay. And you could buy some smithing stones, but we don't really need them. But you always come back here and buy some. And the crack pot, don't really need that. But um, keep that in mind. Alright, next. Let's ride on down to the Summon, Summon Water Village side of Grace, down this way to the east. Some skeletons in this graveyard here. Don't, you don't have to worry about them. Rest up. And we're like maybe 1200 short of leveling up. Let's go whack this boss here. This Tiber Mariner boss. This will pay 2400 runes. If I recall correctly. And this is pretty easy. Best way to take him on is Rock Sling on horseback. I'm going to show you some key areas you can go to to make this really super easy. Let's get our wolves on the situation. Rock sling. Maybe a little bit of armor just in case he gets a little cheeky. That'll do. Okay, seems as your wolves are ready. Pop them out. Right up close, turn sideways, throw out that rock sling. Lock on, turn sideways, rock sling. If he disappears, he typically goes over to the west side here.
There he is. Now what you want to do is get up on the, the little cliff there. Right here. Perfect place to take him on. As you can see, we got him by the nuts. He's eventually going to disappear. As soon as he disappears, push to the southeast. There he is again. Going to do the same thing again. Get up here. Now how easy was that? Huh? Stick with the slack and you won't get whacked. And he gives you a death root and the skeletal militia mash mil militia man ashes now if i recall correctly there is a smithing stone one here there we go and some trina's lily here and finally Over this way, we could spend the stone sword key to get the turtle talisman. The green turtle talisman. Anyways, it improves your stamina recovery, which is actually useful. And it looks like I'm fat walking. Why are you fat walking? Because you're heavy loaded. Okay. Oh, uh, probably because of this. There we go, that's better. The Green Turtle Talisman. There we go. Raise the stamina recovery speed. If you only got one talisman slot, that's not the best choice for this build, but once we get more talisman slots, yep, that would be useful. Okay, so having done that, um, we can level up. Actually, what I would prioritize right now before leveling up is everybody go to the Waypoint Rune Cellar where Sorcerer Selen is. And let's go buy the Scholar's Shield spell. There you are. Shall we come in? Scholar's Shield. Basically what this does is it reduces the amount of stamina that is wiped out when you're guarding with your shield. That stat is governed by the guard boost stat. If you see in the center of the, center of the screen it says guard boost 50. What it does is adds about maybe 20 or 25 to your guard boost so you use up less stamina. So basically, you can tank more hits. This is going to be very useful in the market boss fight, right? Having done that, um, let's go do the Gravitas run and get the Gravitas Ash of War and the Halic Drake Talisman. I figure the best place to start off would be First Step Side of Grace. Okay, everybody go to the First Step Side of Grace. Turn to the east. Bring up your map, and what you're looking for is. Sorry, I'm going zoom crazy. Okay, we're there. Down to the southeast, just south of Dragonburnt Runes. 
gonna see this kind of like runes structure here just follow like a straight line along here like that all the way down once you get to the green area right about here okay right about there put a beacon there that's where we're going okay and there's some more birds you know the golden rule whenever you see birds whack them bring up that glintstone arc and farm yourself some flight pinions. You'll thank me later. Okay, you probably want to veer off to the right here a little bit because there's kind of like this black hole over there that you could accidentally fall into. A bunch of bats guarding a single golden rune one. I don't know if it's worth it taking them down. And I was a little off with my beacon. Here is the side of grace right here. Okay. Activate that. And we have a spirit spring. Probably see it. There it is. You see the spirit spring? We're gonna use that to get down to the beach. Right over here. Just double jump off, take a leap of faith, and down you go. Up here, this bad boy, I believe he's called an Alabaster Lord. Kill him and you get the Gravitus Ash of War. Great for getting enemies who are trying to ambush you around the corner. Let's just wait for him to come back complete his patrol and then as soon as he turns back we're gonna sneak up behind him and rock sling him to death Give it up, big boy. Ash of War Gravitas. Having gotten that, go grab yourself some smoldering butterfly. And... Let's hook up uh, the torch here. Head into this little hidden cave here. And grab the Halid Drake Talisman. This will give you holy protection. This will be also be useful in the market to fell boss fight. Alright, having gotten all that, it's time to take on Murkwater Catacombs. Back to Murkwater Coast. Put the Gravitas Ash of War on your S stock. And we could put, uh, yeah, load that up like that. And we're good. Make sure you got lots of arrows. And we're good. Okay, hook around here, head to the north. Basically head to that little statue up there. If you interact with these statues, they always show you the nearest catacombs. This one's pointing to Murkwater Catacombs down there. Just use the spirit spring to get down. Head up the ravine. And in you go.
And it looks like you're fat walking again. Let's just take off all this. We don't need this. All right. Rest. Don't go past that line right there at the bottom. Okay? Stay behind that line. Right up here. If you look up here, there's a imp on the ceiling. Charge glint blade should take care of no problem. Target the other one on the wall, dead ahead. Once you drop both those guys, go in here, but watch out, there's a guy waiting to ambush you here. A couple of pebbles on him. Very good. Next. Grave glove word. Grave glove word. Switch over to your bow. Sneak on down here. Precision aim. Aim for the head. Or, if he comes at you. You can just hide behind here and wait for him. He'll eventually get tired and either turn around or come at you. If he turns around, you can go like this. Lock on to the other one over there. And just go like this. <laughs> That'll earn you. Want some more? A little more. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, and there's one more behind the corner right here. If you just go out like right about here, use a grab just attack. That'll bring him out. And again. And he was stunned. And down he goes. Here's the boss door leaper. Watch out for the pressure plate. And the boss door opens up. Bring up your bow again. Sneak on down here. Precision aim. Aim for the head. Mighty shot. Bob's your uncle. Same thing. And there's one more up on the ceiling. It's hard to get him from this point. You just like run in and just all the way in. Turn around and pebble him. And you're good to go. Alright. Goes Glover 1. Boss fight. Grave Warden Duelist. Easily take him down with Rock Sling. We'll take a little bit of strategy though. Let's throw in some armor. Best armor to protect you against physical damage. So, And we won't need this. We won't need that. So you can take that off. Lighten the load. Okay, so I can muster up 21, that's pretty good. Okay, and Rock Sling, and you want your Wolves. Let's check the FP, make sure we got 55. Yes, we do. Okay, so basically go in, spawn the Wolves, refill your FP, and just wait and see what he does. See if he engages the Wolves. If he engages the Wolves, I'm going to run across to that side over there, lock on, and Rock Sling. And that's pretty much it. If he comes at you, lock off, run to the other side, rinse, repeat. That's the plan. Let's do it. Wolves. Refill FP. Watch to see what he does. They engage. Go over to this side here. Rock sling. Watch him carefully. Seems to break his stance, refill. And that's it, that's all there is to it. And for this, we earned the Banished Knight Angvol. Totally kick ass spirit ash.
This is what we're going to use in the Market the Fell boss fight. He always survives. The plus two version always survives the Market the Fell boss fight. He'll actually out survive you. <laughs> if you really suck. But I'm going to show you how, how not to suck. Okay, so having done that, next. What else is on the list? Um, oh, yeah, upgrading him. Okay, so. Back to Storm Hill Shack. This is the last thing. We have to get Rodrika out of Storm Hill Shack and into the round table. Okay? She's still here at Storm Hill Shack. The way you do this. And we should have money to level up. Yeah. Okay, so we can put Vigor at 20. That's important. Wait till daytime. And we're going to take the secret passage passage to Lyurnia the Lakes. The secret passage is this road here. Instead of hooking around to Castle Stormville, what you're going to do is you're going to head up this road underneath the bridge all the way up here, drop off here, and ride all the way up to Lyurnia the Lakes. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Basically, deadhead. See if you can ambush these guys, make some quick jump change. Go on, go on your way. Oh no, you don't. Get some bolts, keep those bolts. Those are, those are important. All right, straight due north. Keep your glintstone arc ready to go. We're gonna do a little farming. Golden opportunity to rack up some thin beast bones. You can stop here and have a little chat with the finger reader. I'm gonna pass on that. At the very end of the bridge, there is a cookbook that will allow you to make soft cotton. Make sure you grab this. This is part of our stealth build. Okay, Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 7. If you check your item crafting screen, you can now make soft cotton. Alright, next. Get yourself down here. Hook up your bow. And some arrows. And you hear the telltale sign telltale sound of the teardrop scarab right over there. This is a storm wall set or a storm wall ash of war. There we go. Grab that. And Bob's your uncle. Up here. Bob jump up here. And you're gonna turn to the right and find this skinny little passage. Careful you don't fall off on the right side there. You keep pushing up until we kind of like run into a pack of wolves and then we'll start whacking the wildlife right about here you could try to get these birds here but they if they do give up some flight pinions it typically falls off the cliff we got one okay I'm right about here you get these hop along Cassidy's here Get some thin beast bones off in. Alright, here's the first pack of wolves. You know you got them all when you get a enemy grief refill. There's the enemy grief refill. Second pack of wolves here.
And we got the enemy group refill, that means all the wolves are dead. Continue up here. As soon as you discover Lyernia of the Lakes, Rodrigo will move to the round table. And we should have got that notification. At any rate, rest here. And let's head back to the round table. Now we have to agree or get the blacksmith to agree to train Rodrigo. Here's Rodrigo. Let's say hello. Hey, Rodrigo. Nice to see you again. My name is Rodrigo. How you doing? I should have told you sooner. That's Isn't nice. This place impressive, though. It is, though, eh? The round table hold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You the guidance bestowed upon us. Uh -huh. You don't say. It's all a bit much for me, in truth. I'm still uh -huh. looking for my own purpose. Oh, really? Okay. Let's go find her purpose. Simply after she says, "I'm looking for my own purpose," go to the well, blacksmith. I took you for no matter. It's all out your own. And ask him about Rodrigo. She's crestfallen and can scarcely swing a blade, but okay. she has a gift for spirit tuning. You know what I'm saying? I saw another one like her long ago. Long ago, Their okay. Share the same hue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, having done that, leave, go back to Rodrigo. Good news, Rodrigo. Hugh has ag agreed to train you. Yeah, yeah, uh huh. You're telling me I possess some kind of gift? Yep, you do. Believe you. If oh, I come do on. have this talent, and goodness knows it would be my first, I suppose I should try to hone it, shouldn't I? I'll yes, you should. Master Hugh to teach me. Good idea. I know he can tell. Okay, now, Master Hugh is gonna be a little reluctant, but you just have to like talk to him. He'll agree to do it. Back already. No matter. Look About Rodrigo? Would you watch over it? You out of your mind. Nope. Stay with an absurd. It's what she wants. Refuse to believe it. I don't doubt you, but I. But he'll do it. Okay, just exhaust his dialogue. Go back to Rodrigo, exhaust her dialogue, and then rest at a side of grace, which is right here. Okay, do, so it's on. I suppose I should try to hone it, shouldn't I? Yes, I you should. Master Hugh to teach me. Okay, so at this point, all you have to do is just rest here. Rodrigo will disappear and set up shop right across from Master Hugh. And now she can improve your spirit ashes. I have you to I can happily announce that he has taught me the noble toil of spirit tuning. Hey, how about that? Yet unsure of what I might be able to accomplish, but if I might be able to help you all, I'd certainly like to try. And all right. if there's any chance to ease when Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see what you got. Let's see your stuff. Okay, so she can improve our Banished Knight Angvel. It's a unique spirit ash, so it takes Ghost Glovers. We got the Ghost Glovers, you just don't have enough cash to do plus two. We are missing about 1500. All right. We have a Death Root. Let's go to the Third Church of America and take the Waygate to the Bestial Sanctum. In case you don't know, from the Third Church of America, go to the Northeast. Hop into this ravine here, and there's this hidden Waygate right here. Take that, travel to another location. Push right in here. Discover this. And we can give the death root that we got from killing the Tiber Merida to this guy. Give one death root and he'll give you a free seal, which will allow you to cast incantations. As long as your faith is high enough. Feed it me. Feed me. 
Feed me. There you go, claw mark steel and a beast eye, which will tell you when you're near more death roots. Okay. Right? Having done that, we are now in the area of vulgar militiamen. Each one is worth a thousand runes. One of the best early game money farms, in case you don't know. And there is a golden seed down this way, down to the southeast. You can see it up ahead, that golden tree. Um, these vulgar militiamen you can take out with rock sling. It's better to take them out um, on foot, I think. So let's just quickly grab this golden seed here. And go all the way down to this side of grace here, the Ferrum Great Bridge, which is my favorite starting point to do a little farming. Alright. Back up. Actually, let's let's do a fresh start. Oh, and we have two golden seas now. Add charge to flask. Very good. And allocate flask charges. I would leave it just like that. One and six. If you're really nervous, put it at two and five. But I'm going to put it at one and six. And so now we have an emergency health recovery. Let's put that right here. Alright, we need 1500 runes. These vulgar militiamen, extremely dangerous, but they give up 1000 runes each. Get behind him. Two rock slings is going to break his stance. Third one's going to finish him off. Actually, I think the fourth one's going to finish him off at this point. Oh, it took five. How about that? And I probably should have put Golden Vow on my S stock to get a little damage boost. No matter. One more. And he's down. And we have enough to improve the Banished Knight Engvil to plus two. Greetings. Are you here for Spirit Tuning, Special Ashes, Banished Knight Engvil plus two. Done and done. That is it. We are ready for Stormvale Castle. This is our build complete. Uh, our Stormvale Castle loadout is going to be the s top with the Golden Vow Ash of War on it. Like I said, you would typically put the Golden Vow on a dagger, something really light. But I like to have like my S Dog running double duty. It's a sword that you can use to stab behind a shield, and it has Golden Vow on it. That's it. The build is complete. We are ready for Stormville Castle, and I'm not just going to leave you hanging. I'm not just going to leave your ass hanging in the breeze. I'm going to walk you through Stormville Castle, starting off with the Market the Fell boss fight. All right, gonna take you through the whole thing and show you how powerful this build is with all these basically simple weapons you know but it's a nice beautiful collection of weapons that'll help you like just totally kick ass as a ranged in a ranged play style all right totally kicks ass and you'll see in the video to come take a bow there blitzen and part six is already live let's ensure everybody where part six is it's up there click on that thumbnail all right and you can watch part six right now but before you do give me give the old slacks your big old thumbs up and subscribe to my channel post a comment and stuff like that there there you go nice long video for you guys and i'll see you in part six 